One, two, one, two. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here at a closing AO arena. A fantastic, magnificent seven, reminiscent of the original, um, and closed by one of the upsets of the year, probably domestic level anyway. Uh, you'd have to say so, right? I mean, Nathan Heaney was the underdog there. A lot of people weren't expecting him to win. Denzel Bentley is the guy that's competed at world level, competed well at world level, has that power. But Nathan Heaney, I'll tell you, when he needed to box, he boxed. When he needed to move, he moved. When he needed to showboat, he showboated. When he needed to trade and have a fight, he did that as well. Close fight. I think Denzel Bentley can look back at things and think, like, well, maybe, maybe I did enough or maybe I could have done a little bit more here and there. But uh, congratulations to Nathan Heaney. A big moment for him, a big moment for Stoke, a big moment in the, in, the, in the life of Nathan Heaney. So happy for him. Bet 365 ground next year. What is Canelo free? Is Canelo free? How, how about that? No, I, I mean, look, I, I think we have to go there. I think the whole idea was he was meant to fight for a British middleweight title at the Bet365, and that was maybe like the, the, the mountain top, the peak. I don't think it is, though. There's like, he, he's hit that peak, and now he's like, well, you've done that well against Denzel Bentley. What's next? Yannabek, what are you up to? You know, all, all these guys, why not? Why not? With a performance like that, that sort of confidence, that, that belief that he's got, and that fan base, uh, I think he's, uh, he's in a very good place. Nick Ball, Isaac, uh, really competitive at parts, but Nick just had that little bit more in the end, didn't he? Yeah, I, th I think so. Uh, I think the scorecards were probably a tad wider. I remember hearing one in particular going, oh, OK, a bit much that one. But um, definitely the right man won, and a tremendous performance from him, and that sets him as... I mean, who, who has beaten Dogbane? Emmanuel Neverete, Rosa Ramirez, so the best featherweights in the world. So what does that mean if Nick Ball's beaten him? He's one of the best featherweights in the world. He's now mandatory for a WBC world featherweight title. We believe that green and gold belt is going to go to Liverpool. And uh, I can't wait to see him get that chance and wreck his way through whoever the champion's going to be. Just going through the rest of the card, open the night with Collins, then Emma Cozin beat Hannah Rankin, then we had Sol Dakers, Harry Scarf beating Echo Esserman, and who else did we have? Liam Davis come off the canvas. Unbelievable fight night, really. What a fight that was, the Liam Davis fight. I love Liam Davis. He, he, I think he's becoming one of my favourite fighters in the world. He, he's got it. So he got in a trade-up with the guy. He tried to knock him out straight away, by the way. He got into a bit of a trade-up, got knocked down himself, knocked the fella down a couple of times, and then got the stoppage, then jumped up to the top rope, looked straight down the camera, started screaming, started going over to Frank, screaming, grabbing his testicles, talking about how I've got the cojones. Did you see? Did you not? You did not. Uh, I didn't see that. I didn't see it. He, he grabbed his cojones, right? So he went up to he went up to Frank. He said, "I'm the next in line," and then he started grabbing his. I've got big, big balls, is what he said. But um, speaking of big balls, Nick Ball as well. You know, it's all it's all happening. It's all happening. Great night. Big balls of the Queensbridge stable. I don't I don't know why you went down there, but. Yeah, big week for no, you. Look, it's been a long week, mate. I know, it's that's been a long. That's, that's what I was going to say. The Man Manchester presser on Tuesday. I had AJ send me to hell on Wednesday, right? Then I had Fury Usyk, Fury just calling him a dosser and a sausage on the Thursday. Come back up here on Friday, and now to be honest, mate, I could probably do with a kip. It's been a while. Last one, then very last one, because yeah, we have all been at it this week. Um, did you see there your boss, Mr. Warren? Uh, he just had a spat with Adam Catterall. He pulled Adam Catterall and he said, can you please stop talking bollocks uh, about the heavyweight division? Uh, yeah, what is your thoughts on everything Adam says, the whole Fury talk sport thing, and yeah, more importantly, your boss giving a little telling off after the Magnificent Seven card? If, uh, if, people, if people make uh, comments, they have to be held accountable, as I found out myself earlier this week. Um, but, but, <laughs> but yeah, look... Adam's been quite opinionated, quite outspoken with his opinion on a huge, huge platform. Um, and if Frank feels that he's saying things that are completely incorrect, uh, which I think he did at times, I think he did, did start walking it back. He did start seeing and understanding the bigger picture, Adam Cattrall. But Frank's going to pull him up on that. That's his job. And I think we're about to get run over.